everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really pretty spinner cards. Now I've made this style card before, but it was about two years ago, maybe even more. So I will link that with tutorial up here. But I thought I would revisit it as part of this creative card series. And when I received these papers, which I'll show you in a moment, I just thought they're going to work perfectly because they are double sided. So actually I'll show you that one because that one, I realised afterwards that actually you want to do them upside down so that when they spin they're all the right way. So this is how they work. You can see on the side here and then you would kind of wind them up and then pop them in the envelope. So wind it up and pop it in like that, well the right way up. <laughs> and then obviously when that person takes out the envelope it will spin around. And the nice thing about this is, is it does balance itself and then it will kind of just sit there and it looks really nice. And also I put these out in the garden because I was looking at them out there and when the wind catches it, just a nice light breeze, this just went around really nicely on its own and it was so pretty. So that's the one using a circle and then this is the one using the square. Look at that adorable fox's face. So I've got sending hugs and happy thoughts because I thought that's just such a, he just looks like he's just someone that would give a really good hug. <laughs> and then this one here is wishing you a day of happiness. And I, I think that would work quite nicely as a wedding card because, you know, she's got like the nice little kind of floral headdress on there. There's something about it. I think it could definitely work for a wedding card, but obviously that could also be for a birthday or any kind of nice day. You could just be sending it just to wish someone a nice day of happiness. So but, and again, with this one here, you'll see it balances and it will stay obviously upright, but again, you can spin it around. But like I said, if you have them, so that one's that way up, and if you stick the next one upside down, then when they spin, it's always the right way up. So, I mean, it spins pretty quickly and you wouldn't really notice it on that one, but it's obviously if it did, it's not gonna stay like that because it's the way it's been kind of stuck down. It knows that this is the front. But um, yeah, really, really easy to make. So let me show you. Okay, so for this one here, I'm using the absolutely stunning Paper Boutique Magical Forest. So I did show you this one in my What Did I Get video last week, or maybe a couple of weeks ago now. And you get, so I, I say it's a kit because you get the really nice um, eight by eight papers. You get 36 with six designs, but then you also get these toppers and that's what I've used. And because you get four pages of each, you've got obviously doubles of everything. So you can see where I've been using them there. I'm gonna use the owl on another one, but I'm gonna do, yeah, I need to choose which one I'm gonna to use today actually for this one, because I've done the fox in the square, so I'll leave that one. So I think I'm gonna do the little owl. So we'll pop him out now. They're really well made. They're on really thick cardstock. So I'm just gonna pop those two out there. But I've still got all of these for obviously lots of other cards. And then you also have square ones as well. But I'm going to do a circle one today because I want to do it the right way up. So yeah, there's all the images. Slightly different. So you can see that one there. What a different look. But they're just gorgeous. Beautiful palette of colours. Love the soft pinks and the soft greens. So it's, um, yeah, definitely going to get used a lot. And I just thought it worked perfectly. This just whole card I think shows off the papers beautifully. So I've already chosen my paper and I've already cut that to size. The stamp set, you know it. If you've been watching me, you're gonna see this one all the time. It's two pound, it's a bargain, go and get it because you'll use it loads. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I've used a wishing you a day of happiness, sending hugs and happy thoughts. And then I've already gone and stamped, lucky to have a friend like you. And oh, I know I did choose because I've chosen him. No, that's fine, because I, I remember now. How bad's that? I have all these, because I do a lot of filming throughout the day, so I have piles of all my cards kind of ready. So I'd forgot, but look, so that's who we're gonna have on this card. Doesn't he look like he is saying he's lucky to have a friend like you? And he's got a little bouquet of flowers. So that's the one I've got ready there. So prepared all of that. This here is like glitter, very strong glittered. It is a fabric, but it's almost like very, very strong paper, but you can tie it in a bow. I picked it up from B&M and it was a pack of, I'm just counting them, two, four, six, eight glittered rolls. And um, this beautiful pink has just worked lovely with this collection. So I'm working off of a six by six card blank here. Okay, so you see there, just a normal one. But you wanna cut this down, I don't need the scoreboard. You wanna cut it down to four by six. So, but you want to keep the folded top, okay? So I'm going to pop it in my trimmer this way, okay? And then just go up to, no, what am I doing? 
You want to go in that way with the fold on your left hand side. The fold needs to line up with the four inch marker and then just trim that. If you are worried you don't want to put two pieces through at the same time then obviously cut each one separately. But now you should have a piece of four by six and then I've got this piece here which is three and three quarters by five and three quarters and that's going to sit perfectly over the top and then I've gone ahead and done all these pieces to decorate. Then I've got my circle. Now this will vary depending on what you're using because I'm aware that not everybody will have this paper pack that I'm using. So whatever your topper will be, whatever your image is, you can use anything and it doesn't have to be the same image on each side. It can be something different. So And it can also be words. It doesn't have to be a picture. So the circle that I'm using is roughly three and a half diameter, just a little bit over. It's just kind of shy of three and five eighths. So something, I, I guess, roughly that size, but you can have smaller if you want to. Now it's up to you if you want to cut before you add your paper or after. Personally, I prefer doing it after because it saves you having to faff about with all of that. So that's how I'm going to do it. So first of all, I'm going to stick this down first. Okay, while well, I'm just letting that dry, so I need it to be completely set before I run it through the dye machine, I'm going to prepare my little topper. So because I've got these double images here, one of them I'm going to flip upside down. Okay, so I'll do that again in a minute. But what you want to do is turn over whatever one it is. Now the string I'm using is just really, really, really old. You can see how old this is. And it is a 12 inch cord machine thread. It's just very, very strong. It's not like a, um, you know, some of those threads you can't even feel them in your finger. You can really feel this. It's quite a thick one. So again, I'm not really up on my threads, so I'm sorry, by the poor description, but you want something that you can't snap in your hands. I can't snap this. When I do any sewing, sometimes I'm really naughty and I might just pull something just to kind of, you know, because I haven't got my scissors at hand. This I can't, this is really strong. So if that's an easier way to kind of gauge the kind of um, strength of the thread, then uh, yeah, that's the best I can do. But I'm just gonna cut some of that off. And First of all, so you want to make sure your image is straight. So there's the top of his head. So I'm just going to turn that over because I need to make sure what I stick down is kind of in a straight line because that's what the string's going to follow along. So I'm going to take that backing off and I'm just going to stick that on there. So you want to stick your string right through the middle. Okay, and then I'm just going to put another bit of double-sided tape over the top, so that kind of sandwiches that in there, and then just cover the rest of the circle with some double-sided tape, and I will also add a little bit of liquid glue as well. And then you just need to remember what way up this one is. So that's the right way up. So this one needs to be going on upside down. Again, try and get it as straight as you can. So having these does take a lot of the work out for you because you these really pretty images, you know, and the fact that there's so many of them works perfect for this style card. So again, I'm just going to now let that really dry. So now this is nice and dry. So along the folded top, you want to lay down your circle or whatever shape it is you're using. You may not be using a circle. Oval shapes, triangle, well no, it can't be a triangle because it needs to be able to twist around inside, but square, rectangle, circle, ovals, those will all work. So you basically just want to sit this roughly halfway over the card. Okay, so you can see there. Okay, so I'm just going to get that run through my dye machine. Okay, so just take that all away. Okay, so now we have Oh, God, and you've obviously got lots of room to write inside there as well. Next, we need to. I'm going to decorate this part. So, I have a piece of white cardstock which is five and three quarters wide by one inch, and then I've got this piece which again is five and three quarters, sorry, long by three quarters of an inch. So, just a few little kind of mats and layers there just to 
decorate on top. If I bring that up, you can see that I've just used some scraps from that one there when I made that. And then I've got that sentiment, which is going to go, no, sorry. Then I have that that's going to go over the top. So I'm just kind of built up a little nice border here. Then I've got that piece that's going to go over it with that beautiful bow, which is going to go there. So I'm going to go and get that all stuck down. Okay, so that's all stuck down. I'll do the bow at the very end because I'm going to add some gel glue to that one. So now you want to sit this inside and you want your image to be lined up and the string to run right through the folds of the card. So what I'm going to do is grab some double-sided sticky tape and you just want to stick it, not right from one end to the other, just kind of in between. So I'm just coming in a little bit and then sticking it because I'm going to cover this with a tiny little bit of decorative paper just to cover that up. So I'm going to just peel off my backing tape there and also you want to trim off the excess of that string. I probably should have said really how much you need but I'm not that precious with the strings, there's so much on there. So I'm just going to cut away now so you've got about three quarters of an inch hanging out. You don't need much at all, so like so, because you don't want this hanging out the side of the card. So then what you want to do is sit it down and you want equal border, so you want an equal ring all the way around. So you can see my grey mat underneath, it's the same all the way around there. And then you just want to kind of let that string kind of fall where it needs to, but you need to keep it taut to at the same time so you do have to you can kind of lift it up a few times once we put the rest of the tape over the top then it'll be fine okay so I'm happy that that's where I need it to be and then kind of holding that down pull it quite taut so you haven't got a great deal to hold on to but as taut as you can you may want to not cut your string until you've done this bit because I've made a few of them so I'm not really worried like that there we go okay so just make sure yeah probably don't cut the string straight away just leave it on and now you could trim it so now I've got that where I need it then I'm going to get my double sided tape and again put some more over the top just to really seal that in and there's not going to be any tension on this I mean you're going to wind it up a little bit but other than that it's just sitting there so you know you don't need to go and add loads and loads of glues and stuff like that it's um, you know it's only a card at the end of the day. It's just a little bit of fun. So yeah, double-sided tape will be fine. You can use red liner, but that's that can be quite thick. You don't really want to have, I guess, more bulk on this. Okay, then I've got two pieces of half an inch by one inch, and these will just sit perfectly within this section. That's if you're using the size circle that I used. If you've got something bigger, then you'll need that to be smaller and the opposite way. If your circle's smaller, then this piece will need to be bigger. But that fits just perfectly in there, like so. And again, I can stick that one. So I just use, again, scraps of the same paper because it ties it all together. So now, now they're stuck down, you just want to fold it ever so slightly just to kind of work it back into that fold, like so. There we go. And then I'm just going to grab some of my gel glue here, pop some onto the back of that, and then stick that one just there. And there you have it. So now if I just wind that up, so this is what you would do before you put it in the envelope. What you may find is the card start to bow a little bit. That, mean, that means you've got it quite strong in terms of the tension. You don't want to twist it too much because you don't want it pulling out of where you stuck it in. But now I can pop that in the envelope and it will fit into a 6x6 six six envelope. And then you take it out and it spins. And then when they've just finished with it and they're just enjoying it, it will hang there and kind of just yeah move around if the wind catches it. I love it. I think he's so cute. All of them are really cute. I haven't got a favourite because they are all so sweet. I'd love to know who made, you know, who drew the illustrations because, yeah, they are beautiful. There you go. Three really pretty spinner cards. I love how these have turned out. 
the papers have just done all of the work really for me. So hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying the series so far. Please give me a thumbs up if you haven't already and subscribe to my channel so you get to see the rest of the series and also all the other tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.